On today's Apple Daily, new gamer-oriented Apple TVs. Apple's A14 processor crushes in graphics. And iPad Air 4 versus iPad Pro 2020. Which one should you buy? This is the Apple Daily. My name is David for Living on iPad. And I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you. And if you want the latest Apple news, leaks, and rumors every weekday at 12 UTC, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell so that you don't miss a thing. First up, rumors are that Apple TVs with A12 and A14X variants are rumored uh, to be coming soon as absolute gaming monsters from the sounds of things along with a potential gaming handheld controller a la Xbox. Now, this looks like it's because Apple is looking to massively grow the Apple Arcade service that they've had uh, around for a year. I think it's a year. Did it start last year? I think it did. I think it came out the same time as Apple TV Plus, um, and they did the, the short free trial on that one. So I think Apple is planning to roll out some pretty astonishing demos this year at the Apple iPhone event in order to try and boost up the Apple One subscriptions as soon as that comes out. It would certainly make playing games like Call of Duty Mobile and PUBG Mobile on your TV with a controller pretty compelling. Um, it would basically be full console level stuff, especially with the performance in the A14 and the A14X. Now, if you didn't see yesterday's video, uh, I kind of extrapolated out 64% increase in performance between the A12 and the A12X processors and so we kind of extrapolated it out based on the a14 benchmarks that have been uh, released and oh it's going to be a spicy meatball but more on that next also won't be holding your breath for fortnite apple's a14 crushes in metal graphics yesterday as i just mentioned we did do a full video on the a14 and its single and multi-core performance scores but there is another factor that uh, plays into this, which is metal, which is basically the graphics performance of the chips. The A13 Bionic, we're not comparing this to the previous iPad Air, we're comparing this to what was in last year's iPhone, uh, scored a 7308. Uh, and to put it in perspective, the iPad Pro's A12Z scores 11665, so way ahead of the iPhone. But the iPad Air with an A14 in it, is scoring 12571, which is just... So the new iPhone chip is gonna quite handily beat uh, the current generation of iPad Pros on graphics, uh, as well as on single core performance. The only place that the iPad Pro is winning at the moment is multi-core, and that's by like 400 points. It's about 10% faster on multi-core. But the iPhone is like 30% faster on single core with the A14. So that's pretty epic. But it also beats it on graphics. And graphics is always the big chunk that the X series chips crow about a lot more. Because obviously with the iPad you've got a bigger screen. You've got more pixels to push. So it does make a difference. That's pretty amazing. So which one should you buy now? Should you go for the iPad Air or the current iPad Pro? We're gonna completely discount the idea that there may well be a new iPad Pro this year. And I think this kind of actually points more to the fact that there probably will be. Setting that aside for now, if it was just between these two tablets, which one should you go for? Price, starting price, we'll go with the UK pricing because the difference is pretty much the same everywhere. It's 579 versus 769 for the starting prices of both. Uh, so 579 for the iPad Air versus 769 for the iPad Pro. Uh, the iPad Air coming with 64 gigs to begin with and the iPad Pro starting with 128. Now you can't get a 128 in the iPad Air, you can only go from 64 to 256. So it's a little bit tricky on that side. In terms of screen refresh, uh, you've got the 60 hertz on the iPad Air versus the variable ProMotion that goes up to 120 hertz on the iPad Pro. Uh, you've got a single camera on iPad Air versus the cluster of two cameras plus LiDAR on the iPad Pro. And you've got six gigabytes versus eight gigabytes of RAM from the Air to the Pro. In this case, I'm gonna say that having the 60 hertz uh, display is actually gonna be an advantage for the Air because it means it's only having to push half as many frames, which means that more of the processor time will be available for doing stuff rather than making that screen as buttery smooth as it can be. And if that really matters to you, then that might be a deciding factor for going up to the uh, iPad Pro. However, for me, I'm happy with 60 hertz. I genuinely am. Obviously, a bit more um, 
Obviously, a bit more storage is always a great uh, a great idea. 64 gigs, I think it's going to be pretty good. I've got 32 gigs in this thing, uh, and it's just about enough. But whenever I want to do video editing and stuff like that, I do have problems, and I don't keep my iCloud photos. A little bit of a tip here. Instead of keeping the iCloud going for photos with this, I actually save space by removing all of my photos and just putting on the videos or the photos that I'm working with via AirDrop from my phone. Um, it tends to save me a big chunk of space because even using iCloud, you've still got the thumbnails on there. So if you are struggling for space on an iDevice, whether it's an older iPad or something like that, that might be a solution that works for you. Uh, in terms of the cameras, not many people are actually using iPads as a video camera or a, or a stills camera, to be completely honest. However, it makes a great video camera uh, because you've got such a great display to check stuff out on. As I say, not a massive factor for a lot of people. However, I do think that the LiDAR sensor that's in the iPads Pro at the moment barely does anything. I think when we get this next event and when the iPhone uh, 12 Pro lands with the LiDAR, I think they might be enabling some more um, uses for that LiDAR sensor. Because I, as I've mentioned in a previous video, I genuinely think that LiDAR sensor is going to be used to make videos and photos even better on the iPhones. I think we're going to get bokeh effect on video. I think that's going to be like one of the killer features for this year's iPhone uh, 12 Pro, um, which won't be on the uh, the 12 models or the 12 mini. So I think that might be uh, something that might swing people one way or the other, but we won't know that until we see the event because obviously Apple needs to pull something out of the hat. There's been a lot of disappointment this year with the fact that they're not putting 120 hertz ProMotion onto the iPhones and we've seen a lot of the specs leak. However, what we don't see when we see spec leaks is what the capabilities are going to be. And I've said a few times, Apple doesn't ship specs, they ship capabilities and abilities and features. So we might be seeing this LiDAR, loads of tech vloggers and tech writers are saying, uh, well, the LiDAR is not going to convince me. I don't want LiDAR. What point? What's the point in that? I don't do any AR stuff. It's not going to be for AR. It's going to be to improve video quality, um, how quickly it snaps to focus on things. I don't think you'll see any focus hunting ever again on an iPhone that's got a LiDAR sensor in it. I think it will absolutely just snap to whatever you want to focus on. I also think you might be able to do focus pulls. Um, so literally choose two areas and then uh, hit a go button that uh, slowly moves between focus on those two areas. That would be quite cool. Also being able to isolate a subject within a video and bokeh affect the background in a really, really good and effective way. I think that's gonna be a killer feature for this year's iPhone and iPad. It's Sunday, October 4th, 2020. Why, thank you. So today is Sunday, October the 4th, 2020. That's when I'm saying, well, like I've put this video out ages ago, but just to be sure, that's when I'm saying that the LiDAR sensor is gonna be for video. I said it well ahead of the event. I don't think many people have been saying it yet. So last week we also did uh, our first AMA session, uh, Ask Me Anything, and I like to do these questions and answers things. We are gonna use the hashtag, hashtag iCaveAnswers, because this is my iCave. I've decided that is what I'm gonna call it. Um, so iCaveAnswers, if you've got a question for me, you can either hit me up on Twitter with it, uh, at livingonipad and use the hashtag, or you can put it in the comments with the hashtag. It just helps me to find those questions out. Because I have a feeling that we are not going to hear a event announcement today. I think that's going to come tomorrow on Tuesday. So I'll already have shot the video by then. So let's do a bit of Q&A in case there's not a lot of news to talk about tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you want to know from me. And if you want to join the notification squad, don't forget, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, and let me know in the comments that you have. And I would love to give you a shout out for joining. Thank you so much. See you on the next one.